Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneer Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast. This is episode 297 for the 19th of Elul in a leap year. So today we're going to start off with an ethical thought experiment. So imagine for a moment that you were stranded in the middle of the desert. God forbid, I don't wish this on any of you, but imagine for a second that 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 was the case and you were walking together with a friend. Both of you guys were stranded there for a while and you've been walking for a while uh, no sign of civil- civilization in sight. You ran out of food. You ran out of water. You only have one cup of water left. And this cup of water was only enough to either keep you alive or to keep your friend alive. So you guys were really at your wit's end. And it wasn't enough for both of you. It's not enough for both of you. It's, it's, it's you or your friend. So what are you ethically obligated to do? Is there an ethical obligation? Is Are you obligated in this case to give the water to your friend and save your friend's life? Uh, are you obligated to say, you know what, let's be fair and just nobody gets the water? Do you share the water, but then it's not going to be enough for either of you guys to survive? What do you do? So the Gemara actually brings up this exact quandary, this exact situation, and the Gemara rules in Bava Matia, page 62a, interestingly, that the obligation is actually the rule, the ruling is that you should drink the water and not give it to your friend. Meaning to say the larger uh, kind of teaching from all of this is that your own life takes precedent over somebody else's. So while, yes, we're supposed to do everything we can in our hands to save a life, our own life takes precedent over saving anybody else's life. I, it kind of reminds me a little bit of like when you're on the airplane and uh, and the stewardess tells you, you know, that you have to, in the event of some kind of emergency, blah, 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 whatever, you want to put the mask, the oxygen mask on yourself before helping someone else. So there's this idea of needing to help yourself before you can help someone else. That's needing that you need to be in a place that's solid in order to be able to help anybody else. And before you're in that solid place, you are not under any obligation to help another person. So with this teaching in mind, and the reason why we're bringing it up today is a person might then think to themselves, and this was actually a an assumption that it sounds like a lot of the altar of Chassidim did back in the day, that if they are poor, God forbid, let's say, you know, they're not really making a lot of money. They're not really where they want to be in life, they're really struggling financially, then maybe they are exempt from the mitzvah of giving charity, from the commandment to give charity. So this makes sense logically, right? Like if you don't have enough for yourself to be comfortable, then how can you start giving to other people? And this is a very valid argument. If somebody comes up to you on the street and uh, and asks you for money or an organization or someone you know that's really deeply in need, you might really want to help them. But like, if you can barely sustain yourself, then how can you start giving to other people? So the altar is going to address this point today, and he's actually going to address these very people because back in the day, what with the altar Rebbe's chassidim were, very few of them were people of means, and the vast majority of them were these struggling, impoverished people. And he's actually going to tell them that this actually does not hold true, that for these people in this situation, they're still obligated to give charity. Anybody who's still poor is still obligated to give charity in the vast majority of circumstances. Why? Because in the vast majority of circumstances, when we're talking about people who are poor, maybe you can think of yourself, you know, the last time that you struggled, you were a little late paying your bills, paying the rent, that kind of thing. Yes, that's unfortunate. It's unfortunate to be in that state of poverty, but there's 
the chances are there's someone below you who's struggling even further, who doesn't have enough food to eat. My mother actually witnessed this when she uh, she was a volunteer for Yad Eliezer, an organization that raises money for Jews in Israel. And she went to visit um, homes in Israel of these really impoverished people who the mother would actually ration out rice for the children. Or there was like, I think one situation, there was like a, there was a one, the fridge, all it had in it was one little serving of yogurt that was it and the mother was was stopping the kid from eating that yogurt because that was the only food in the house and they had to save it so it's like this that's poverty that's like really poverty you know so if you're in that state that might be a different story but if you're just the type of person who can't afford the luxuries of life who can't afford all the things that you would like to get you can't get a new pair of shoes this season a new coat this season you can't go to that concert that everybody's been talking about that you really want to go to because you just you just don't have the budget for it your friends are going out to eat at the the latest restaurant and you really just can't afford it and it's really annoying everybody's going to be out there having a good time except for you yes that's annoying and i empathize with you and the ultra of empathizes with you but you're not really impoverished to the point that you can't give so if you're in a situation where you're struggling financially, you still need to give a charity. So that's the, that's the answer. The answer is that even if you're poor, yes, you still need to give charity. So that's what we're gonna learn today. And this is go- going to be in the form of an epistle, that the beginning of an epistle that the ultra bit um, gave over to his, uh, to his um, community, to his chassidim. This is the beginning of epistle 16 from Iger Kodesh, and so the ultra Rebbe starts off and he's he addresses this to the members of the community and he says my beloved my brethren my friends who are like my own soul so it's a, he addresses everybody in, in a very loving manner so it's not in a harsh way but with a lot of w- warmth he said these hard times are not hidden for me in which the livelihood has dwindled so he's saying basically i'm aware of the fact that people are struggling financially especially those to me, the, those people that are known to me within the community who have their hands have faltered, meaning that like they're really, they don't have any kind of parnasa, any kind of uh, means of sustenance at all. And they don't have any providers at all. They don't have any work. These are people, so this is really intense. These are people who are without work. These are people that need to, um, the ultra says, says, need to literally borrow in order to eat. So this, So this is, not even the type of person that I was talking about before who uh, can't afford to go to Bison and Bourbon or like the latest restaurant or something like that. These are people who need to borrow in order to have food, in order to have eat, to eat. So he says, Hashem should have mercy upon these people and Hashem should um, bring them respite from all of this very soon. So he's giving them a bracha, a blessing. But at the same time, he says, Yes, like I'm, I'm empathizing with you guys and Hashem should bless you all so that there shouldn't be an issue anymore and everything like that. He says, nevertheless, it's not good. It's not right what they're doing to their souls. According to, to the reports that the Ultra Rabbi heard, that they closed their hands, which had in the past been open up until then. And they used to give with a full hand and a good eye, like very generously, basically, to for all the, the things that were necessities for to the uh to the to the poor people to the here the these paupers are referred to as the clean destitutes of yonim nekiim the ultra refers to them uh who he says these paupers are looking upon us and if we don't pity them god forbid who will pity them so basically the ultra is saying that yes you guys are in hard times. We see, I see that. I know that. I'm aware of that. Nevertheless, there are people who are even more impoverished than you. There are real paupers out there. And you need to look at them. And you used, you used to give to them. And he's imploring his chassidim to give to them once again. And he brings a citation from Vayikra to support this. This is from Vayikra chapter 25, verse 36. V'chei achichai mach, so that your brother may live with you. So... Uh, so basically, it's he's bringing biblical support for this idea that like, you know, you really have to watch out for your for your friend's life and to share those things that are essential to life. Like if you have something and if you share it with your friends, that's going to save their life. You're obligated to do that. 
And then the altar of brings up this teaching, which I had mentioned in the beginning from Bava Basra about this whole idea of Chayecha Kodmin, that there's that your life takes precedent, right? So that if you're trapped in a, in a in the desert and you only have one glass of water, you are obligated to, to drink that water and not give it to your friend. So the altar of says this only applies in a case when all you have in your hand is a pitcher of water, meaning to say that. In that situation of the desert, the two people, you and your friend, are in equal places with both of us. So they both are need, have that same level of thirst and they both uh, need that water in order to live. But, however, says the ultra Rebbe, if we're talking about here a pauper that needs uh, bread for their children and firewood and clothes for the cold and things like that, like really essential things, then all of these things take precedent over any kind of like honorable clothing that you want to get and nice food for your family, like meat and fish and all kinds of delicacies that a person might like for their family. So sure, we all want to live well. We don't want to just like be like in survival mode all the time. We want to have nice things. We, who doesn't want to have nice clothing, good food, things like that, good warm heat at home and things like that. But the Altar is saying here, he's being really strict. He says, yes, these things are nice and everything, but they don't supersede actual food actual like you know water like livelihood that you're like if, if this pauper is in need of actual sustenance then that takes precedence over your luxuries and he says that in this case the rule of that your life takes precedent does not apply in this case because it's not really these things are not essential to life um like fine wine good uh, not even fine wine any wine or meat or fish you don't really need those things to live we can live like essentially on very little and so these things cannot be considered to be like really truly essential to life in the same way as they are for the poor and the ultra says that this is discussed further in the Dharm, page 80b so that's the end of the section today so just to kind of like bring it into modern terms and just to kind of like bring it home so it, the basic idea is that like even if you're struggling, even if you don't, like you're not where you want to be financially again, let's say you can't or afford the organic food, you can't afford the, the Instacart delivery fee, things like that, you know, bring, making it um, Amazon Prime or whatever. It's like, that doesn't mean that that exempts you from giving charity to somebody else. Because at the end of the day, it's like these things, like like a poor person, the 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 average poor person nowadays is living a lot richer than the average portion poor person was many years ago so that includes you that means that like if you're struggling it doesn't mean that your struggles aren't real and we should all have enough and more you know oh, an overabundance of wealth we should all have that but nevertheless just because you feel like that you're not in a place that you want to be financially and that you feel like you're struggling in some way even to the point that you're in credit card debt because of these kind of things that doesn't mean that you're exempt from giving charity because there are people out there who have a lot less than you like severely less than you and it's like if you really thought about it it'd be a wake-up call and it's you know especially true in Israel so in America Baruch Hashem you know there are all kinds of social services and things like that in Israel it's not as great and the standards are lower so this is especially referring when the ultra was talking about this he was referring to the funds for the land of Israel but of course any kind of tzedakah is good to give uh, but if you want to really do that mitzvah to the utmost degree then you can really think about giving to the land of Israel to different organizations in Israel and so yeah so that's that's the end of the section today so once again this is another one of those epistles that's really focused on giving charity on giving staka it is just such an important thing to do and um, so go out there and give 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 and um, yeah and that's it for today and we'll continue with this tomorrow when we conclude this epistle I'll speak to you then Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast, hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Abraham Yitzchak ben Benjamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Top project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. 
To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow. And until then, have a great day.